surfers that were out there. And I, it was, it was remarkable how many people get by with just this kind of like with an average pop up, like with a, with a, like get into your feet with some sort of um, mechanics that that could be tightened up, like. And as well, like I noticed a lot of people when they surf, they they pop to their feet if they've got a really good pop up. If they can, if they're strong and they can pounce to their feet. It's amazing where their feet land. And because you're surfing in this like really controlled environment, it's really easy for me to see too, because I can walk to the end of the pool and just look straight down. So it's like being on a pier or a jetty, except I'm a lot closer. And I can see where their feet land and I can see how they, they when they go through their first turn, I can see how maneuverable their board is based on where their feet are. And there's a direct correlation to how they're getting to their feet. So I just thought if there's such a large community who have such, who could all use some sort of tightening up with their, with getting to their feet, it's something I should definitely work on. Um, so I kind of wanted to work on that today. And I think a lot of it as well is, is just having the mobility through your hips and, and also be able, being able to create enough space so you can really bring your feet underneath your chest because you're still pushing up off the board. So your feet literally need to come up underneath you and have to land in the right part of the board because that is the, for me, I've just, I've just been noticing and that on that day, especially because it's so controlled, there's so many people landing with their feet, just not in the right spot and then having to shuffle and that shuffle that, 0.5 of a second that it takes to move your feet into a better spot, the amount of rhythm that you lose on the wave, it's considerable and you have to play catch up. So the start of the wave is definitely the most important part of the wave. We talked about how important a good turn is. A good turn starts with a, a good entry. So your entry into your first turn is the, is the pop-up or is the placement when you're paddling into the wave. They have to be on point. Now, when you're in a pool, your placement is taken care of for you because you're taking off in the same spot. But still, your pop-up needs to be as good as what it can be without any faults. So that first turn can be as good as what it can be. So I kind of want to go through that today. I felt today we could work on a little mobility in the areas that you need to have to ensure a good pop-up and then making sure everyone understands the correct mechanics. I know we've been through it before, but I want us to... Uh, uh, I feel... who. Like just show of hands, who gets sometimes finishes the end of the wave and goes, oh, I didn't really, really implement what I was supposed to be working on there. Like, yeah, it's like, and I, and the, today I was working with the guys and they were so excited when they were paddling for a wave. I was like, how that wave? He goes, yeah, it was, it was great, but I kind of like forgot about everything you said. <laughs> Or I wasn't able to action what we practice on the beach prior to that. And, and I was like, okay, so tell me why. And they just go, I get too, I get too excited. I get too, there's too, there's too much going on and I want to go really fast. And now I think that happens with everybody. So I feel like, all right, let's, let's work on ways that we can slow things down so I can actually execute my new uh, or, or, or a way that I think will upgrade my surfing. So how do we slow ourselves down? Well, breath is one. Being able to breathe, we do our breath work at the end of class to bring us back to a baseline. Uh, so being up, making sure we're breathing through the process, one, two, um, keywords, saying a keyword. If I say three at once, like foot, push around, that allows me to do things probably a little slower than we'll push around or if I'm how I say my keywords or if I don't have any keywords at all, then I'll probably just jump into the process. I'm, and as well is maybe, maybe being a little bit earlier to your, to, to whatever you're doing. So if you feel like you're taking off or in a position where you are kind of under pressure, then maybe it's something we work on placement prior to getting to, to catching the wave. So do I need to, uh, nominate the wave that I'm catching earlier? Do I need to get down on my board and leave to paddle for that wave a little earlier to catch it? W would that help my ability to be able to relax through the start of the wave? Because when everyone gets to their feet and it's perfect and they're on the wave, life's good, life's easy. It's all about the little bits prior to that 
that, that make things a little bit challenging. So I want to help everyone make life as easy as possible in that first part of the wave so they can actually have the ability to execute the things that we work here on land. So that is my goal for us today. So let's work on some stretch, some ability, and then let's work on some ways that we can slow things down to execute a better entry into the wave. And that by entry, I mean the start of the wave, paddling in, popping up, and then before the first turn. So everybody got their Swiss ball here today. I'm hoping everyone has their Swiss ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. If you don't have a Swiss ball, make sure you have one next week. <laughs> um, try and find just a, a pillow or something to roll over. From here, we're just going to inhale, exhale, push back, inhale, exhale, push back. We're going to just do five, but three. Four, five, excellent, coming down, sitting on the mat, grabbing a ball. If you don't have your ball here, just grab a, the chair or something you can do to just place your hand on the ball from here, lean in, stretching the right hip, stretching the right glute. Inhale, toss the ball to the other side. Inhale, exhale, toss the ball to the other side. Inhale, toss the ball to the other side. One more time. Inhale, exhale, good. From here, if you don't have a ball, use the chair or something. From here, I'm going to place the ball in front. So I'm on all fours. My arm is in front of the ball, but it's resting on the ball. From here, I'm going to roll the ball to the right. I feel a stretch down my right lat. From here, inhale, roll it around, roll it back, switch sides. Inhale, exhale, roll it back, switch sides. Inhale. Roll it back, switch sides, inhale. Roll it back, good. This one's a really good for the, for the pecs here, guys. So I'm on a pause, place my elbow and forearm on the ball in front of me, like so. And from here, I'm just gonna push my right shoulder to the ground. So this shoulder cuff area that's connected to the pec, I'm pushing it down. So you're gonna see a little movement but I want to push against the ball and hold for one, two, three, release, switch sides. Have the elbow and the hand, the forearm protected by the ball and then just push the left shoulder down. It should feel really nice this stretch, guys. This one is epic for paddling. So if we get short shoulders from paddling long distances, this is a great one, switch sides. Switch sides. Very nice, guys. Very nice from here. Push the ball out in front. Inhale, arms stretched out. You can rock backwards and forwards. Good guys, pushing the ball aside. Our first, one of our first movements we're going to do today is I'm going to just going to place my hands close to my chest and I'll push up on my knees and replace my right hand with my right foot and inhale here. Good. And then I'll push it back and lower myself down. Switching sides, push up, taking the left hand off, replacing with the left foot, push back. Just nice inhale and then exhale. All comes up, making sure that when you land, your foot, my I want the foot directly under the knee and my chest hitting it. 
I want to avoid getting to here. Okay, so I'm not pushing up and getting to here. Okay, I'm pushing up and I'm really leaning forward. Okay, pushing down. Inhale, push to side. Get a stretch. Push back. Drop down. Push up. Come forward. Come down. Push up. Nice. Come down. Push up. Good. Come down. Push up. Good. Now, I'm ending on my left foot forward here, guys. Right from here, and you can see my knees on the ground. Okay, I'm getting a nice stretch in my hips and in my groins here. So from here, I'm going to elevate and come onto the left side here. So I'm changing my toe patterns to go from here to here. So it's like I'm, I've got this really, really wide stance on the surfboard, but I'm heavy over my left side. Now I'm feeling a really nice stretch over the right groin. From here, come down, inhale, exhale, come over. Turn around, inhale, push up, come over. Inhale, push up, come over. Inhale, exhale, good. Now I'm going to swing to the opposite side. Good. Turn face forward, inhale, exhale, elevate. Weight shift on the right side, staying low, hand touching the ground. Come back, inhale, exhale, coming up, inhale, exhale. Good, one more, inhale, exhale, coming up, good. Switching to the opposite side, dropping down. Good. From here, I'm going to push my foot back. Inhale, come down. Good. From here, now I'm going to push up into plank position. And from here, I'm going to, to this position. Okay, so I'm going to come forward, push back, drop down, push up. So I'm going to land in this position. Push forward, drop back, plank, come down, push up. Good. Pull forward, push your hands back, down, push. Nice. Everybody's looking good. Switching sides to the opposite. So as I switch sides, drop down. This time my knee's not touching the ground. Step back, lower down, inhale, push. Come around, drop down, push. Come around, drop down, inhale, push. One more. Good. Inhale, stand up. Good. Okay. So now created a bit of movement within our hips. But we're also adding that pushing up, that explosive part of getting to your feet. Now, pop up is much easier than all of that, than what we're doing right now. So from here, we start going about keywords, but I want everybody to come up with something that marinates with them, <laughs> something that's really sort of helpful for them. So everyone's different. Everyone has their sequences. Um, a really important one here is just when you when one when you're paddling for the wave, depending on which which what stance you are, make sure you drop the hand that my right hand comes all the way down to my right rib. 
which is here. My left hand is way higher on the board. It's kind of like in front of my chest because I want to be able to turn like this. Even when I go backside, it doesn't matter because I bring my right foot up first. So now you can see how my hands are positioned. As well, up the top of the nose of the board, it's shaped like this. Okay, so when I'm placing my hands on the board, they're up high here. Okay, so that's how my, my hands are placed like this. My fingers wrap over the rail on the right side and my top of my hand places more over the front. It's not on the rail, it's more towards the middle of the stringer because I can twist. Okay, so that's how my hands are placed. Now, if I'm going backside and I wanna pop up and I wanna grab the rail, it's very easy for me to go from here to here. Okay, so that's why you see guys when they're surfing backdoor, when they pop up, or sorry, when they're serving pipe, or they're going right at back, they're goofy at backdoor, their hand can just fade straight over and grab, and it's effortless, very easy. Okay. The other reason is as well, when I get up, I'm here, step. Step. When I roll back, my foot, look at my foot, guys. It's so important. It's on the tail pad at the back. Okay, my foot needs to be back here. Your foot, if it lands here, is not in an optimal position. It needs to be here, up against this, especially if you're riding a short board. So, Part of the process is making sure that your back foot lands in the right spot on the board from the takeoff because it should be the first point of contact. So from here, when I have first foot that lands on the board, it's the back one. And then when I bring my front foot around, here. Okay, now you can see my right leg is dropped. Okay, it's not so much my I'm forcing my right leg down, it's because this is my squat, we do this all the time. But if I want my hip to pull forward, it brings my left, it brings my hip down. So it's my hip that's pulling forward. So when I stand up, I'm facing in the direction that when I go, I want to face right. So this is when I do a squat here, but if I want to face the direction, I need to pull my hip forward. So I'm facing the direction I'm going. That's why we drop our back leg. now. The best way for you guys to drill this is to make a mark where your feet hang over the edge of the board. So you can see this black line here. And just to prove a point, this is how my feet, this is how long my legs hang over the board. So I'm kicking in the water here and it hits the middle of my shin. Okay, so you want to find a point that has your shin, the middle of your shin, connected with it. So you want your foot to hang over it. And that's, and that's the point you want to drill. So you get some real consistency with knowing where to put your back foot. So if I my shin on my marker here, like so, hands to the side, push, drag the knees, step up. You'll notice my back foot is on the back of the board. Okay, so that's what we want to drill. So for you guys, I want you now to breathe as you're paddling in, and I want you to come up with your keywords. So for example, my keywords are hands. Place my hands at 45 degrees. Push, push up, place my back foot on the board. Around, bring my front foot around and hit my chest and come up. So my Keywords have a sequence of moves that's in one word, but I only got time for one word. So for me, hands, push, around. Okay, and you want your back foot to land at the same time. So breathing into the paddle, making sure that you're doing all the 
correct sequence of things. So if everyone can do this with me, okay, laying on the mat, chest high. Okay, so I've got to, if I'm, I'm, I'm pad, when I'm paddling into the wave too, guys, I'm never paddling into the wave with my chest high like this, like I'm paddling out the back. When I paddle into the wave, my chin is down on the board. I'm pushing over the front of the board. So then when I put my hands like that, I'm super low. Okay, and I am never like this. I'm always low. Hands. Push up. Making sure that I'm facing the direction that I want to go. I want my right shoulder to, to be able to face in the direction. I don't want it behind me. And now I'm going to come down. Okay, so making sure my hands are at 45. The front hand is in the, the hand that's up the front is more in front of the chest. Push up. Stand. Okay, dropping down. Paddling, breathing, lowering down, hands, push, slide, step up. Let's see, guys. I'm going to do one by one. Jonathan, you're doing it already. Off you go. Okay, make sure your left foot does not touch the ground, Jonathan, when you're doing it. I saw your left toes touch the ground. So it's really important to not use your left foot to, yeah, you, you can't use your left foot to bring your, you can't touch the ground to help your left foot come around if you're a goofy. If you're a right, you can't have the right, uh, the left foot push off the ground. Lewis, go. Nice, mate. Again, long one more time, Lewis, and do it a little slower for me. Beautiful, beautiful, solid. Uh, Evan, let's see it. Okay, come down and do it again for me nice and slow, please, Evan. One more time. Yep. So you got to be careful, Evan, that your right foot doesn't, doesn't like spring off the back. Pretend like remembering there's water underneath your, uh, your, your feet, right? So what happens is everyone has a tendency. Uh, this is my front foot. They have a tendency to go like this. So see how my left foot is pushing and then it comes up. I have to keep this foot off the ground because there's no, nothing for me to push up on. And you can kind of get a false read on how easy it is to push up, pop up. There you go. That's better. That's better. Uh, Jem. Nice, Jem. Do it one more time. Yep. And for you too, Jem. You use your you use your left foot. You have to keep your left foot off the ground. For, for, the, for the purpose of this drill, go like this. Okay, so keep your left foot off the ground. Push my left foot's not touching, and then it comes up. Yeah. See how it's a little bit more tricky? Because you can't push off the you can't push off the, the water like you push off the mat there. That is, that is why this is where people get a little bit thinking it's easier than what it is. Dylan, let's see it. Yep, same with you, Dylan. You cannot touch the ground, Dylan, with your left foot. So elevate your, again, you did it again. Yep, there you go. That mat looks a bit hard because it keeps rolling up. Uh, Jason, let's see it. That's looking solid. Now, Jason, stay there. Go, no, 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 no. Now, pull your right hip forward so your chest is facing. No, no, no. There. That's better. That's better. Now, put a little weight, more weight shift. Just elevate yourself a little bit. Now, pull the right hip even more. There you go. So that is your kind of like 
position. Jem, are you ye yelling at me for something? Oh yeah, see you later, Jem, no worries. Okay, so that, again, if I'm, this is really good we're doing this size. So again, I place my left foot in front of me. So I'm gonna elevate it and see my left foot here. Hands in front as I push. My still left foot is on the ground. I place my right foot on the ground. My knee is on the board. Okay, so that's okay. And then I step the hip. But here, I want to make sure my right hip is pulling forward and I'm upright. Okay, so I want to go. This is how I'm going to weave down the line. I'm looking down the line. I am not like this. I am not weaving down the line like this. And, then, and the other thing, guys, if you get the opportunity to get a barrel, you will not get a tube by squatting down. Because look at my look at this surface area from here to here. It's, it's long. Okay, it's it's a lot of area. If I go to the side here, then I can get a lot more compact and I can fit in the tube and I can see where I'm going really well. Okay, and then I stand up. So that's the movement here. So it's the same thing here. Um, so I think the key points for everyone here with this pop-up is making sure that their front foot does not touch the ground. I cannot use that as a spring. That's it. That's it, Jonathan. That's it. So much better. I'm better. Now, and as well, guys, you do not have to race this, rush this process. If we can put ourselves in a position that allows us time, then you're going to really be able to run through this process a lot slower. Now, and Evan, can I, Evan, can I just see if you can move, because you're a goofy, can you drop your left hand down and bring your right hand a little up closer to your chest? There, yeah. Because, come back down, Evan. Yeah, beautiful. Come back down. Now, don't pop to your feet, but when you br bring that right hand up, can you easy, easy, more easily twist to face the camera? Now, see how it's really, you're really wide, okay? So that your hand space right now, it's too wide. I've got to narrow it because I don't have that much area on my board. So bring that one super close to the hip and el even elevate the, the right hand up a little higher and bring it towards more your chest. Yeah. So from here, I'm, as you can see here, I've still got this chicken wing. I'm not extending my hand out. It's still close to my chest. It's just, I'm just bringing it in front. And now, yeah. And now for me, especially when I go right, I can look in that right direction, but as well, I can bring this right foot up way easier. And that's the key because that right foot for me touches the ground first. Now, if I go like this and push and bring my right foot up, I've got to really stretch here to bring this right foot up. If I bring my hands around, it's so much easier for me to bring my right foot up. And you're doing it the opposite, Evan. You're bringing your left foot up. And that's much better. Beautiful. Yes. That's more realistic. Okay. And that will help you bring your back foot up and have it planted on the tail pad way easier. Um, when you Can you do it again for me, Evan, please? That is so much better. And you've got that. No, stop there. Stay there. Drop, come back down. Now, see how that back knee, guys, see how that Evan's got that back knee dropping down? Okay, so it's higher than his front knee. His, his back knee is higher. That's because his hips pulling forward and he's facing the direction that he wants to go. See how his two arms are out in front of him? That shows me that his hips are pulled forward because his arms out in front. That's a really nice technique. And uh, in, in case you guys have seen stab and whatnot, you'll notice when Mick Fanning talks about getting chewed, Pushing the trolley. So he'll be like this, two arms out in front. And he goes like this. Because his arms are out in front, he's got that pushing the trolley, but that means his right hip is pulled forward and now he's facing the direction that he wants to go. Okay? 
and it allows you to get super tight, okay? This movement here. Uh, hope this kind of like helps as far as a better understanding of how to improve the beginning of your wave. And it's such an important part of the wave because it dictates the rhythm or the timing that you have. If you're behind the eight ball, it's challenging to get the results that you're looking for. So let's make it easier for us to practice our new mechanics that will hopefully allow us to build on our turns, make our turns better. Uh, and the pop-up just seems to me like it's everyone could use a little bit of bit of a hand there. So ah, talking my so much on this session, I don't really talk so much, but hopefully I'm not annoying you guys. Um, I just felt that as a really, I know we didn't get to train much today, but I feel like doing a bit of that movement on the beach prior to your surf, also just encourage you to work on your pop-ups. Um, but try and uh, definitely, it's something we can all practice. You don't need good waves. You can just go out and practice it. Start playing around with it. I like to, one thing that I do like to do is when you do get to your feet, kind of just ride off a wave, get to your feet, have a look down and see where your feet lie. If, you're, if you've got grip, great, then you can kind of feel where the, the back foot is. If you don't have grip, then it can be challenging because wax is, feels like you could be anywhere on the board. Um, so it's nice to have a like, just check out your feet, see where you live. Um, but back foot back, guys, back foot back is going to really help with making that board as, as, as loose as possible and as sensitive. Um, when we end with a bit of breath work, guys. Um, I'm going to do, going to do a minute breath work. Then we're going to do 30 seconds. Then we're going to do 20 seconds. And then we're going to do 10 seconds. So, sorry, we're going to do a minute, 30, 15 seconds. I'll count you in with the seconds, okay? I'll say five, four, three, two, one. At the end of the minute, 30 and 15. Here we go, minute counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale diaphragmatically only, guys. Very slowly exhale through the mouth. Focusing on slowing the heart rate down. Breathe out all that oxygen. Then begin the massage. Thirty seconds. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale. Fifteen seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale. Really slowly exhale. In the massage. Good sesh today, guys. Uh, thought it was one that we could all use a little bit of refresher on. So thanks for tuning in. I had a good time. Appreciate uh, you coming to class. Love having full groups like we did tonight. It's awesome. And I'm hoping to hear back from you next week. If we got all really, really, really would love to hear feedback. I'd love to know how I can help you more with reaching your goals. If you guys tell me what's going on, that I am better equipped or I have a better chance of, of helping, you point, helping point you in the right direction and maybe changing a few things um, to help you reach those goals. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys next week with uh, how your pop-up went. Make sure you get in the water once. Doesn't matter if it's one foot and onshore. See if you can get in there. I'll see you guys next Monday. Shaka Do mahal. you have any clips, Luke, on, uh, on YouTube of like pop-up stuff as well? Yes, I do. There's, uh, uh, you know what I'm going to do, guys? I recorded this session. I'll put it up uh, on YouTube as well. Um, but I already have one that's on there. It's called Perfect Pop-Up. Um, and it put a breaks down uh, a series of uh, mechanics that we do. It goes for five minutes. It's, it's a good watch. And it just pretty much the sim exactly the same stuff we do today. But that's a good one for you. All right, guys. And as well, look, as well, guys, if you get a chance to video it, video your pop-up. The guys in Venice have the best opportunity. Evan, you have the best opportunity to get your whoever, your son, stand on the top of the pier and film looking down. It is a gold mine. And you can, I can see where your feet live. We can see your mechanics and it's actually just it's a great uh exercise to do uh and incredibly insightful for you personally and as well to help all, us all understand how you get to your feet is is we're a pretty tight community now so uh, we shouldn't feel uncomfortable sharing our surf experiences uh just because yeah we all want to get better and it's great to learn from one another so if you get a chance send me some clips guys I've never surfed the pier. I've lived in Venice. <laughs> never surfed yeah. it once. <laughs> and you know what? It's it's the worst wave on earth. I'll be hundred <laughs> percent like up front with you. It's awful, but it is a great spot just to practice your pop up. And again, Lewis, you're you're if you live by the pier, or and Jason, if you live near a pier, being from down a little further down the coast, it's a great spot to film this exercise. Uh, and you'll be interested, you'll love it because you'll be like, oh my gosh, I do this. Or, hey, I'm actually doing that really well. That, what we did in class, that seems to work well for me. So uh, that's how you get better, guys. It's humbling to watch yourself on video. It's so humbling. Seriously. It is the most <laughs> painful experience on earth. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter if you're Evan Lab or... If you're Taj Burrow or if you're the world's best, there are always moments where you go, that felt a bit better than it looked. Yeah, it's so <laughs> useful though. I remember I saw a wave that I got at the pier and I felt like it was a great wave. And then I watched it. I was like, oh, I did all these things wrong. But <laughs> it just changed my surfing now. Like I, being able to watch all the stuff that I didn't like watching, now I think about it every time I get up on a wave and it's just improved my surfing 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Great insight, Evan. And as well, guys, if you, if you don't have a uh, have someone a video, 
you guys have great access to surfline cameras there. There's like the one actually at the north side of the pier and I think the south side of the pier at Venice is an epic camera. It gets so close. The quality is really good. So uh, I'm not so really sure where the, like Jonathan, you go where you've got cams up there, but um, watch the cam footage. It's pretty good. It's definitely easy enough to go. Got a wave, really good one at 12.41. I'm going to rewind it and download it. And it's free. We, we do it quite often, actually. But there's like a building blocking the takeoff zone on 90s. And a great cam, yeah. Oh, that sucks. It's like they built a house right in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> like, Don't that. worry. Don't worry. Surfline will definitely uh, hit up that house to replace the camera there, I'm sure, yeah, yeah. sometime soon. There's a kid uh, on the beach that have been adding them that lives like two stories up. He's like, Surfline, what's up? Like... <laughs> <laughs> uh and hey the, the iphones are really good now too they have their quality of filming is it's pretty good especially if you're in a close space so you can get real crystal again i i, I can't get your girlfriend on top of the or your wife or your kid or whoever on top of the jetty get him to film down and let's watch the clips and see how we go guys i, I think it'd be really really fun hopefully you guys can send me some clips before next monday Mm -hmm. great session right, thank you super technical really useful thank thanks you. a lot no yes, worries dude. guys enjoy thanks, it dude. i'll see you soon you right, cheers <laughs> later thank you